moment. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Petra Korn. She is an attorney turned health coach, plant-based health coach, of course. We're going to hear her story, but she's also going to be making a fabulous recipe perfect for fall. It's a special burger made out of acorn squash, millet, beets, and the bun is made out of sweet potatoes. Please welcome Petra to the show. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you so much for the honor of being on your show. Absolutely. Well, the I mean, that burger sounds amazing because so many burgers are based on beans and there's nothing wrong with beans, but it's fun to have burgers that don't have beans, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, I, I love to experiment in the kitchen and sometimes I just see what I have available and then I just put it together and see if it tastes good. Well, it's great because so many people are avoiding bread or gluten and the bun, I mean, sweet potato bun, that, that would be enough for me right there. So I can't wait to see how you throw this together. I don't know how long your recipe is, so I don't know if you want to tell your story and cook, tell your story first, cook first. What do you prefer? Um, well, I, I obviously uh, prepped a lot of things. So I have my mise en place here, everything ready to go. And um, I pre-roasted the potato. Um, so I think we have some time. And I also have some additional bonus um, ideas if we still have time at the end. Uh, cool. Which cool. We will have time for sure. So tell okay. us about you, Petra. When did you first hear of a vegan or plant-based diet? And when did you decide to adopt one and why? Um, I moved to Los Angeles in 2001. And then um, a couple months, or actually, I think, yeah, a couple months after, I went on a 21-day um, detox um, with a nutritionist and a doctor. And um, that really opened my eyes and, um, you know, to what's really going on in the food industry. And um, then doing that 21 day detox, we obviously eliminated all animal products. And um, towards the end, the last week was just uh, raw, raw food. And so I went vegan raw for about a year. Um, and then I discovered that I need some warm foods as well uh, because I also studied Ayurveda for a couple months in Los Angeles and um, I just noticed that I feel better when I have some cooked foods as well in my diet. Nice. Yeah. nice. Had you heard about a vegan diet before going on the cleanse and how did you hear about the cleanse to begin with? You know, I really don't remember how I heard about it. Um, I think I started uh, going to yoga classes here in LA and I think probably just, um, you know, in the yoga community, somebody told me about it. And what, 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 what was the cleanse exactly? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. I mean, in the first week, um, <clears throat> it was called the 21 day detox with Dr. D'Andrea and I forgot. Oh. That is so funny that uh, one of the guests on the show, Rebecca Martinez, who's lost close to two, well, actually over 200 pounds now, that is what started her vegan journey, that exact doctor. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah. But I, I think um, in while I still lived in Germany, I'm, I wasn't really into vegan food there. I, I was never a big meat eater, um, especially since I, moved out of um, my house and of my parents' house and um, started studying law in, in Bonn. I noticed that I never enjoyed preparing meat. So I think I didn't really eat a lot of meat to begin with. And then when I moved to the States and, and I did the detox, that's what started the whole journey. Well, great. Well, thanks for yeah. joining the club. <laughs> So how does one go from attorney to health coach? Tell us that story. Well, um, I was always interested in food and especially after I moved here and, um, you know, with the 21 day detox and then studying Ayurveda. Um, I learned about so many different diets and uh, food options and I love to eat. And, um, but I noticed that, with certain foods, obviously my body doesn't 
feel as good as it could be. And um, then I started learning. I wanted to learn about it, like how I can feel my best. And also, you know, uh, don't harm any animals <laughs> in the process. Um, yeah, and that's what um, started my, my journey. And then during COVID, I discovered your channel and your books. And um, yeah, that then I really did the deep dive. Um, and I, I was in Germany during the pandemic for a long period. And I did a, a nutritional coach program. Um, and um, yeah, that's when I started developing my website. And um, I really thought, you know, it's a good time to delve into my passion and see how I can make that my my business. Nice. But you're still you're still an attorney, though. Do you still work as an attorney? I do. Yes. Yeah. What kind of what kind of law do you practice? Uh, immigration. So my clients are uh, I, I'm admitted in Germany and in California. So a lot of my clients are uh, Germans that live in the States or Americans that want to go to Germany. And um, yeah, it's a lot about dual citizenship or some Germans, they become U.S. citizens. They don't know they have to get a permission because before they become U.S. citizens and then uh, unfortunately they lose their German citizenship unknowingly and then I help them to get it back. So those are some of the. What? Do you tell them they got to be vegan if you're going to take their case? <laughs> you know, uh, some of them are. And um, yeah. Be kind of, know, they don't have kind to. of cool if that was a contingency of representation. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm, yeah. just kidding. I'm kidding, of course. I know. So that's I know. Cool. So, so tell us, uh, where did you get your health coaching certificate? Because people are always interested in the different schools that people are going to to learn this. Uh, that was in Germany. It's called um, Akademie für gesundes Leben, um, Academy for Healthy Living. Um, it's close to a um, big national forest area, pretty much outside of Frankfurt. Uh, it's a very beautiful building and um, the training was actually live and in person, which was a saving grace during the pandemic, because every couple months I was able to meet some people in person um, because they had a great health concept worked out. Um, so they were able to have the, the training in person. That's great. That is great. Yeah. What do you enjoy more, being an attorney or being a health coach? Being a health coach. I have to admit, it's my, yeah, I just um, love it. That's great. How do you yeah. work with people individually in groups? Do you have like programs that start and end at a certain time? Um, you know, I, I really just uh, got my website up at the end of last year or beginning of um, 2022. So I'm still in the phase of developing like how to work with people. I started working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, because it's very individualized and custom customized right now because some people um, they are already vegan and they just need a little bit of fine-tuning and um, they don't know what for example I had one client she didn't know she was good with breakfast and lunch and but uh, when she came home and with her husband or with the family or in on holiday situation, she didn't know what to do. And so I specifically developed recipes for her um, so that she can actually feel good eating with her husband and that she doesn't feel like, um, oh, it's something completely separate and weird. And there were certain things that she uh, didn't like. And yeah, so I really specifically created recipes for her. and. Um, so that she has like four or three different options available. And um, yeah, it worked out pretty well. So she's it's, very it sounds like your coaching is very individualized. It is. For, yeah, right now it is. That sounds great. Yeah. yeah. So do, have you always enjoyed cooking? And when you went vegan, was it just as easy to make vegan recipes? Yeah, I actually, I get inspired. I look at uh, different recipes or um, YouTube videos and I see certain things and then I 
figure out, try to figure out how to veganize them. And um, I, I also did a training uh, with a famous chef in vegan chef in Germany, Sebastian Kopin. Um, so I did his vegan chef training in, um, I think it was in, in June in Munich. And um, he uses a lot of oil and vegan butter in his recipes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, the, the recipes and what he creates is phenomenal and it tastes amazing. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking uh, the ingredients and I, you know, make it work for me. Yeah. Well, I was looking at your Instagram page and you have this Thanksgiving in one bite on there that looks amazing. Yeah, it's very yummy. <laughs> so good. So good. Well, I'm sure the viewers are going to have more questions as will I, but if you'd like to start the recipe, that would be great. Okay. So here is my mise en place. It always helps like to have um, everything kind of um, prepped what you need for the recipe and makes it a lot easier. So um, I basically, what I, I had one of these acorn squash and cut it in half, um, took out the seeds and the guts, and then I roasted it. Um, so, and then here is the part roasted pumpkin. And then I had yellow beets, which I roasted and I cooked some quinoa. So we need about one cup of quinoa for the recipe and uh, cilantro and some chopped up spring onion and then some spices. So, and then it's pretty easy to put together because we just put it in the, in the food processor. So I'm gonna add the, the yellow beets which I roasted, they're very soft and um, they're actually tiny, tiny little beets here. And then you can, once the acorn squash is roasted, it's very easy to, um, to peel it actually. Um, so you can scoop out the flesh or just take a knife or your fingers and, uh, and peel it. And, <clears throat> You can also take a uh, butternut squash. It's just like, I really like the, um, or the orange pumpkin, whatever pumpkin you have available and what you like is perfectly fine. I just like the texture and flavor of the acorn squash. So here's the peeled acorn squash. Then I'm gonna add the cilantro onions. Okay, where's my towel? All right, and then we add the quinoa. How do you cook your quinoa? Um, I think it was one cup quinoa. I and then you want to rinse it really well before you cook it. And um, I think it was a, a cup and a half of water. Um, and yeah, it was pretty easy. Then I add some garlic powder. A little bit of cayenne. And then we can If there are any questions, let me know. Um, yeah, sorry, I was, watching, I was watching you and I wasn't watching the chat. Okay. <laughs> I, I love watching cooking memos. I'm just <laughs> curious, so if, um, if, if, do you or have you put any of your traditional German recipes into healthful vegan recipes? I did. I created, uh, um, you know, the, the Buddha bowls, uh, the different bowls are very popular. Um, so I created a German bowl because... <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of them are with, um, you know, Mexican like beans and corn um, or Asian style, but I've never seen a, a German bowl. So I, I created a German bowl. And um, yeah. Do you still go to Germany often? 
I do. Yeah. What, what's the vegan scene like there? Because I heard there's a store called Vegans there. It's like a vegan store. Yeah, it's amazing. It's uh, I can actually walk there. It's um, because I live in Berlin and um, Berlin is amazing for vegan food. I mean, they even have a, I mean, a vegan sushi place. They make amazing vegan sushi. Um, it's called Secret Garden. And um, yeah, it's just very visually beautiful and um, it's not the traditional they use black rice um, red beets pumpkin sweet potato and it's yeah it's just very creative and uh, beautiful to look at nice so i'm gonna post this up So, and then the fun part. of forming the patties. Which food processor are you using? Um, let's see, um, it's a uh, brown. German brand. <laughs> oh, wow. B-R-A-U-N. B-R-A-U-N, yes. Braun. Yeah. So you just take a scoop. You can get your kids involved. It's kind of a little bit messy, but it's fun. So you just um, <laughs> start forming. It smells really good from the cilantro and the spring onions. Um, so, but uh, I mean, I just want to mention that some people don't like cilantro, um, to them, it tastes like soap. So if you don't like anything in the recipe, feel free to substitute. Um, this is just an idea and inspiration. So if you don't like cilantro, leave it out, use parsley. Uh, if you don't like acorn squash, use butternut squash or the purple squash. So here's the patty. It holds together pretty well. And then I add it to the silicone mat. Yeah, and I normally don't use any measurements when I cook. Um, so I, um, I normally don't follow recipes. I just figure it out as I go. And here's the second patty, ready to go. And of course, for the recipe, the first thing would be to roast the potato that you like. And um, so today I use the orange sweet potato just for, you know, color. And that's what I had. But if you like the henna yam or you want to use a regular potato, feel free, obviously. Um, so this is a small little patty so we have about three quickly have to wash my hands petra clara wanted to know about the german bowl what is a german bowl um what did i put in it i think uh i used potato i roasted potato uh, the regular rusted potato um then i had some purple cabbage because uh, rotkohl or purple cabbage is very popular in, in Germany. I use some sauerkraut. Oh yeah, and then uh, cucumber salad. So cucumber, lemon, uh, and dill. So it's very traditional like to have cucumber salad in uh, Germany. So that's what I used. And um, oh, and then I made like, because instead of meatballs, um, I made the vegan version out of lentils, mushrooms, something like that. I don't know. I mean, I have the recipe. I think it's on my Instagram. Um, and it's also in your member section for your, they, your members have the recipe. It's, it's in there. Um, 
So here are the patties ready to be roasted. So and I'm, I don't have an air fryer here in LA, but I have this convection oven, which a dear friend of mine gave me. So it pretty much works the same. So now they have to roast for about um, cook. It's at 400 Fahrenheit and um, you wanna flip them after about 20 minutes and they should be obviously firm and lightly brown on the outside. But um, so I prepared one patty already. So when it's done, it's like this. You know, it holds together, you can. That's really cool. I bet you could like batch prep these and freeze them. Exactly, that's, uh, yeah. So the, the ones that are roasting right now, I will have them for the next few days. And um, even if you don't use them on the, you know, the way I prepare them today, as a burger, you can just um, eat them with other veggies that you like or um, add them on a salad or take them to go. You know, they're also good with mustard or uh, compliant ketchup. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a great staple to have because you have the protein from the quinoa and, um, you know, the pumpkin and it's very flavorful. Uh, I think it's also a good dish for, for kids, you know, to take to school, for example. And if you don't want to make them into patties, you can also make them into little balls, like just little meatball. I mean, just form them into little balls and then air fry them or put them in the oven. Um, so I like to use things for in, in multiple ways, you know, as, as a patty, as a little ball, or, and then you can add them, you know, on a burger bun or on a salad or as a side dish with some veggies. Okay. Mona's saying, could you make them like crackers or flatbread? Um, I haven't tried it, it's a good idea. Uh, I, I'm sure you can if you basically roll it out flat on a silicone baking uh, sheet, and then I think it would be good as crackers too. Nice. You can uh, especially maybe uh, I would if you have a dehydrator, then um, it might turn out really well. But I will try it. It's a it's a very good inspiration. I like it. Thank you. So next, um, we want to prepare the, where's my ingredients for? We need the, the sauce because the, the bun is already roasted. So basically you take a, a sweet potato, regular potato, whatever you like, you roast it until it's soft. Um, and then we need the sauce, which is peas. And mint with some tahini, lemon, and lime, and then just a little bit of cayenne for some spice. So I'm just gonna add the, the peas to the mixing bowl, and then some fresh mint. Again, if you don't like mint, then Either leave it out or take whatever you like, but I, I, I really like the, uh, the combination of um, the peas with the mint and uh, the tahini. But it, you can also do it with edamame, for example, if you don't like peas and you want more protein or, you know, it's um, very versatile. So I added the tahini just a little bit a little bit of garlic powder. You can also use fresh, obviously. A little bit of cayenne. I like it spicy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my knife. We need the juice from one lemon and one lime. So we have some liquid. And I like this little citrus press. So you can squeeze it directly in the container. 
in the mixing bowl. Jill says she has the same kitchen table and chairs as you do. Oh, in the back? Okay. <laughs> the same color for the chairs? Yes, honey. Yeah, Jill, she already made, you, you cooked your acorn squash in advance. You showed that at the beginning. Yes. The acorn squash? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, because I think it would take too long if I had if I had to roast the potato now and uh, cook the acorn squash. That would be too, would take too long. So I prepped it in advance. Um, all right. So now I need this the top of this. Thing. Okay, and we're gonna mix it. That's very pretty. Okay. So it's, um, you know, if you like it um, more liquidy, then you can obviously add water. I prepped, so it looks like this in the end. Um, consistency, if you like it more liquidy, obviously just add a little bit more water. This is the consistency that I like. And now I think, we have everything that we need. Um, so here is the pre-roasted sweet potato with the top. So to assemble um, the whole thing, I'm trying to hold it up, maybe it's easier. So I would just add uh, a romaine lettuce leaf. A little bit of, I sliced a tomato thin. I will add it on here. Okay, it's like this. Can you see it? Gorgeous. Okay. Then we add our patty on top. <clears throat> and then finally the the top. Oh, we can add another, just for fun, another romaine lettuce leaf. And there we go. Uh -huh. So this is the burger. <laughs> Oops, hold on. <laughs> that, that is some burger. Yeah, a healthy one. Can you see it? It, there looks, we go. it looks like a restaurant meal. Jesse's saying the photos on your Instagram page are beautiful. Oh, thank you. So, and then we add a little bit of the mint puree, mint sauce. And a little bit of balsamic glaze, just to make it pretty. And this would be, whoops, <laughs> it wants to fall off. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this would be the final version. And um, hold on. I added the, this is salt free. So I added uh, this as sprinkles on the top of the sweet potato. So it looks more like a, you know, real bun. So oh, this is on obviously, I mean, in the, I roasted another, uh, just a regular potato. So you can, instead of the white potato, you can use a regular russet potato if you like, but yeah, 
this will be my lunch. <laughs> yeah, this is that, yeah, people that live on the West Coast love being on the show because then they can just make their lunch. They say it's perfect time. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think we still have some time, right? We sure do. Okay. Um, yeah, I recently, I was recently in Japan and um, it was very, I just came back last week and I had some really amazing vegan food that was very creative and, and so yummy and beautiful. Um, but I only, I mean, in general, if you don't do your research, it's difficult to find, um, you know, just uh, food that doesn't have any animal products in there. Um, and at every single corner, they have a 7-Eleven, which is funny. Um, but at the 7-Eleven, they have onigiri. Have you heard of it? I have, I have it. What is it? It's uh, these things. It's basically stuffed rice balls, rice triangles. And um, they usually stuff them with um, kelp, pickled plum, uh, tuna, salmon. But obviously there are just versions like this where they just fill them with healthy stuff. So this was my saving grace. I found these... Um, nori wrapped rice triangles at 7-eleven i can't believe that that i i mean i you know since i got off my slurpees 20 years ago i really don't go to 7-eleven but that's incredible that they have things that we can eat exactly so and that inspired me to um make them so i i, I gave it a try the other day and um so one i filled with um corn and uh, black beans and the other one I filled with edamame and cilantro. Um, yeah, so if you want, I can quickly show you how to, how to make it. I would love to. Now, where do you get the triangles? You form them. You have oh, to. You said, oh, you have to. Okay, so you don't buy them. Hey, I'm curious, Petra. So do they have Slurpees in Germany at the 7-Eleven? Uh, there is no 7-Eleven in Germany. Oh, okay. <laughs> they don't have it then. So there's no, no such thing as a Slurpee in Germany then. I don't think so. Um, I, I don't, I, I never had a Slurpee. So what exactly is it? It's a bunch of sugar and caffeine and it's, a, it's in a machine and it gets frozen. So it's like drinking a Coke or a Coca-Cola, but it's like a frozen confection. It's not very good for you. It doesn't sound very good. So what you need for these onigiri uh, is actually also, if people want to see, um, it's also on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm still in the process of learning how to perfect them. And uh, so, but you need sushi rice because it's very sticky. And then you can either uh, wet your hands a little bit or take uh, some plastic wrap. And then you want to take the rice and just a couple of scoops. Oops, it's very sticky. So, ah. and then you need to form it a little bit. So you can make an indentation for the filling. I need a little bit more rice. Okay. And those um, onigiris are also perfect to um, when you're traveling or when you're on the go, because it's very, you, depending on what you fill them with, it's, it's very nutritious and it's a great snack. And, um, you know, with the nori, it's, you can hold it. So I, you have to create a little bit of an indentation and then here is the filling that I prepared. It's the edamame cilantro. And I paraded a little bit and some of the edamame are left intact. So you have different textures. And then you just take a little bit and fill it in there. 
and then it, you need to cover it with the rice. Okay. <clears throat> Then you form the triangle. So you basically just smush it together. So it forms a ball first. And yeah, and then you can basically you want to, if you hold it like this in your hand, it creates the triangle shape. That's really cool. Yeah, and it's, you can really fill it with whatever you like. Um, you know, um, I like the, it, it's, I think it would be good with mushrooms. And lentils, I mean, it's not traditional Japanese, obviously, but it's, I think it doesn't matter. It's a healthy, it's a healthy snack or a healthy side dish, whatever, or main dish. And then, where is my nori? I cut a nori sheet like uh, in little, you want to cut it in strips. And then you take your triangle and put it on the nori. And there you have your little triangle. And you can, um, just for some decoration, you can also add a little bit of the, um, everything but the bagel seasoning, then it looks nicer. So, yeah. I would totally eat that. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, and this is the, um, the corn and the bean filling that I made. And um, I just added a little bit of, I mashed the beans a little bit, um, combined them with the corn. I added this Miss, Mrs. Dash um, seasoning and a little bit of garlic and it actually it's um, pretty good. If you want, I can cut one open just to show you what it looks like on the inside. Yeah, so it looks like this, it has the filling. This is with the bean and corn filling. And um, normally you just obviously just bite into it. And this is with the edamame. I have never seen those before. They're, uh, did they sell them anywhere other than Trader Joe's? 7-Eleven? Uh, Not Trader Joe's. I wish they sold them at Trader Joe's. In, in Japan? Um, yeah, actually it's... Uh, you can pretty much get them at every supermarket. Um, yeah, they have them also um, like this version or they have them baked with uh, baked fried rice, baked rice, um, all different varieties. But wow. this actually inspired me to also do um, like to stuff a sweet potato because, um, and this is on my YouTube channel as well. Um, I think the day uh, yesterday or the day before I had a Hannah yam and um, I had some spinach and some shredded uh, red and white cabbage. So I cooked that a little bit um, as a filling and um, I had the roasted Hannah yam. I opened it up and I scooped out the inside. Then I mixed it with the spinach and the cabbage and I filled the potato again, closed it up. And then I briefly blanched a collard leaf because it's the perfect wrap. So, and I wrapped it around um, the sweet potato and it's a perfect burrito. Then you just cut it in half and it's also fantastic if, you, if you're on the go or if you're traveling because you can just wrap it up and um, it's nutritious and it's good. That's neat. I, I don't know if the audience knows. I think you know my book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, was translated into German. Can you read this for me, what it actually says? Yeah. The success recipe for um, ultimate um, weight loss. Nice. I always wondered what it meant. What does this second part mean, the smaller words? Uh, 
a revolutionary approach uh, against cravings and emotional eating. Oh my God. Well, that's very cool. Thank you. I, Cause I don't speak German. I mean, I could have said anything. I always wondered what yeah. that meant. Thank you. Yeah. I actually um, bought this book for my mother as a gift and uh, she read it. Oh, yeah. that's, that's amazing. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, oh, you Diane is saying she would add a little bit of California balsamic on top of the rice triangles. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Now a lot of times sushi rice has sugar in it. Um, well, I made it myself, so... Um, no, no, yours doesn't. I know that, but I'm just saying, you know, when you go out sometimes. That is true. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. Well, Alyssa wants to know, she says, you're so clever. She loves your recipes. And do you have a cookbook? No, I don't. Well, get get started on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would love to. I have a lot of ideas. And um, I, yeah, I, I just... You know, this is like a new world to me on how to best uh, get started. And if you if it's better to self-publish or how you find a publisher and all those um, things. So we'll see. That's wonderful. So tell us a little bit about your story with eating and food. Did you ever have any struggles with food or weight? Yes, I did. Um, yeah. In 2019, I lost a. Uh, 20, 20 something pounds just um, <clears throat> before I discovered your, your channel and um, also uh, John McDougall and the pleasure trap and all the Dr. Furman. Um, I lost the weight by going on um, a low carb uh, metabolic reset program, but um, yeah, it, it, it didn't, it wasn't good for my body. Let's put it that way. I lost the weight, but I knew it was not sustainable because I, I didn't eat any carbs and um, I didn't get my period anymore. Um, so obviously that was not uh, the best approach. So I was looking for something sustainable and um, I was so happy when I um, saw your video um, about calorie density and I think this is this is what everybody just needs to know you know it, once you follow that it's um it's perfect That's because when amazing. you follow follow calorie density and you eat uh, you know a lot of veggies and um, low calorie dense foods for them for the most part you don't really have to count calories and um if you tell me like you can only eat like a small carrot and a, a broccoli florid. I mean, I would not be happy. I'm, I'm a, I need to eat. <laughs> I love big salads and I'm a volume eater. So, uh, and a lot of people like, uh, I remember I was at my mom's house, um, a while ago and, uh, she saw what I was eating, uh, because it was a lot of vegetables and she was so amazed at that I'm eating so much food, but it's, um, low calorie density. So it fills you up, it's nutritious, but you're not gaining weight. Yeah, calorie density is the best, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I love it, I love it. Do you, yeah. you, do you strictly follow the no sugar, no oil or salt? Uh, for the most part, you know, I mean, in Japan, for example, uh, at times it was not, I mean, I was hungry, so I needed to, I was happy that I found a plant-based vegan restaurant. So then I didn't go into the whole spiel of, because it was, uh, of if it's completely oil-free, but the cuisine in, um, in Japan is traditionally very low fat and they don't use sugar a lot. Um, you know, in some recipes they do, but in, you know, when you're eating vegetables and rice, there, there is not a lot of oil or it's not very greasy and fatty food. Um, but when I have control over it, then, yeah, I, I don't use sugar and I hardly ever use oil. I mean, obviously, in the sometimes, sometimes I use a little bit of tahini, but um, that's from the, the natural oil from the seed. Nice. And yeah. what do you do for exercise? 
oh, a lot of uh, different things. I love to go hiking when I'm here. I love to go hiking in the Santa Monica Mountains. I go for a, a walk every single day, at least 10,000 steps, main, mostly more. Um, then this morning I did stretch and tone or Pilates, yoga. Uh, so I try to mix it up. Sometimes I do high intensity interval training. Um, yeah, that's it for the most part. Cool. And you know, you're going to get this question. Every guest does. What does Petra eat in a day? <laughs> um, it's, it varies. Like, um, sometimes I have oatmeal, but I haven't, um, had it in a, in a while because in Japan it was perfect. They eat steamed vegetables and rice for breakfast and miso soup. So that was amazing. And I also noticed when you eat that way, all the cravings for anything sweet, they go away because um, it was so just the body gets all the nutrients that it needs. And then I didn't have any cravings for, for hours um, and I wasn't hungry. Uh, when I'm here, the other day I had, sometimes I have a smoothie, but not very often. Um, which is basically just um, celery, spinach, some other greens, and um, a little bit of apple. I don't use a lot of fruit. And then I add uh, lime, um, a little bit of frozen mango, and ginger. That's what I have sometimes for lunch. It's usually a big salad. Today I will have this um, burger that I made. And um, yeah, it's, it's mainly, I try to keep it simple, just broccoli and potatoes um, or other veggies that I like. I really love kale salad in all varieties, like with grated apple um, and grated carrots. Yeah. Nice. Question, if you use a particular brand of nori in your, I can't even pronounce the things, you, and nagis in a, in a, Onigiri. Onigiri. Uh, this is what I had. So this time I used, uh, what is it called? Gimme organic sushi nori. <laughs> um, yeah, this is what I used. Roasted seaweed. Nice. Yeah. The Coleman family is asking if you have an emergency kit or go bag shelter in place stash. And if so, nutritionally speaking, what is in it? An emergency stash? Yeah, like, I, you know, sometimes people like, well, in California, we often call them earthquake kits where we have oh. like food and water and flashlight and batteries, those kind of things. I used to, um, but um, I don't right now. I well, know I should. If you, had one, what, if you had one, what would you put in it? I would... Um, I like to make my own um, oat bars, um, but obviously if I have to store them for longer periods of time, I, it would not be a good idea because they, if I make them myself, they don't last that long. Um, so I would try to find something, um, some form of oat bars and um, maybe soups that, and beans. You know, I mean, uh, chickpeas and black beans, all kinds of beans that I like, I would um, probably store it. And um, what else? Then some roasted chickpeas, you know, they have a lot of protein. I also like the tiger nuts uh, because it's not a nut, it's a fiber. And uh, sometimes when I really want something chewy, I actually eat the, the tiger nuts. Um, and I also make my own plant milk from tiger nuts. Well, that sounds good. Which machine do you use to make your plant milk? Uh, the Vitamix. Where do you get tiger nuts? I've, I've seen chefs use them, but I've never seen them in the stores. Oh, they do have them. They have them at Whole Foods, at uh, Erwan, um, and you can, you can order them online. Where at Whole Foods or the regular stores would they have them? What section? With the nuts? Um, yeah, I, I, I went to Air One and they had them with the regular nuts, I think. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. But uh, 
Are any, is anyone in your family or friend circle vegan? Yes. Um, my my parents are not. Um, some of my friends are. But my parents, um, they are divorced. But my, my dad and his wife, they have two air fryers right now. And um, yeah, they resisted it for a long time because I was, uh, I think they got tired of me talking about air frying things. And so they finally bought one and now they have two because they love it so much. And yeah. my mom has one as well. And um, some of my friends got an air fryer too. So those are the tiger nuts. Wow. And they look like this. Um. What do they taste like? <clears throat> what do they taste like? Um, they're a little bit sweet. Um, it actually, when you make plant milk from it, it, it almost tastes like they've been, uh, that, that you put some sweetener in the milk. Um, I think they use them in Mexico for what, the drink, what is it called, horchata or something, horchata? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think they use tiger nut tiger nuts for that drink yeah and it's nut free gluten-free high fiber um, so it's not a nut it's a small root vegetable actually wow that's incredible yeah. are they very are they very hard are they very crunchy or chewy yes they are so you can eat them like this out of the bag um, but i like it when you um, soak it in water for you know, overnight, then the flavor really comes out even more. Yeah. And then if you want to make plant milk from it, you want to soak them ideally overnight. Um, yeah. That's but sometimes when I'm, when I'm just hungry and I want something crunchy, then I just um, take a couple of tiger nuts. And this would also be in my uh, emergency kit because they, you can store them and it's very nutritious and they last for a long time. That was a great question. Thank you, Petra. What, so if people want to connect with you, what's the best place? On my website, um, healthadvocatecoaching.com. There's a contact um, page. You can email me or on Instagram, health underscore advocate underscore coaching. But I think the easiest would be on the website. And then I put the link to your YouTube page and your Instagram page. Okay, thank you. And the recipe, great. Well, thank you. Yeah, your Instagram page is beautiful. Yeah, and um, I also, have you ever made, um, I know you have your Ninja ice cream maker that you seem to love very much. Um, have you made um, ice cream out of purple sweet potatoes? I have done them out of the Japanese. I haven't done the purple yet. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. So this is the last thing. Um, let's see. Okay. I, you know what? Chrissy just made a funny comment in the chat. She said, I wonder whose idea it was to call them tiger nuts. So I looked it up and they said the tiger nuts are tubers like sweet potato, though much smaller in size. They get their name for the stripes on the tubers exterior obtained from a plant that is yellow, called yellow nut sedge, cyperius and sculetus. These marble sized tubers are chewy and taste a little like almond and pecan. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So I'm uh, for your members, I made um, sweet potato ice cream with mango sauce. And um, so uh, since I didn't have an ice cream scooper until yesterday, I um, put them into hard shape into the silicone molds. And then um, you have these purple sweet potato ice cream um, thingies. That's you really I, you know, I wish I hadn't, I, when I moved, I got rid of a lot of my uh, cooking and baking stuff. And I wish I still had those heart molds because I do use the muffin pan. When I have a large group coming, I make the ice cream in advance and freeze it. But that would have been beautiful to have the heart shape. Yeah. And I have to say like, uh, I was, because they had purple ice cream in Japan as well, because they, 
uh, the Japanese sweet potatoes, they sell them on the street corner that just the, they, they bake them. And then for not even a dollar, you can buy the roasted um, like this. They're just the roasted um, Japanese sweet potato and you just peel them and that's how they eat them. Um, and they make a lot of things. They make sweet potato chips um, and they make, they have um, sweet potato ice cream from the purple sweet potato. And so I tried it out and um, I just roasted the purple sweet potato and then I mixed it up with my own, with the tiger nut milk and a little bit of vanilla powder. And it's, uh, it's amazing delicious it's so, so good you didn't need any sweetener then nothing and are these the, the hawaiian sweet potatoes or which which purple ones are those oh are they the stokes i bet they're the stokes yeah exactly yeah uh, yeah cool. purple purple outside purple inside yeah oh, those, those are great wow yeah what, so many great ideas thank you i'm definitely gonna look for tiger nuts okay perfect yeah so anything next on the horizon for you uh, I will look into um, creating a cookbook. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. That, maybe like, a, you know, I, I don't know if there's even a vegan German cookbook. I, you know, what, what, what are traditional German type foods? Schnitzel? For sure. And um, yeah, meatballs. Um, yeah, all kinds of meat dishes with um, sauces. And um, yeah, I mean, red, obviously, Rotkohl, uh, red cabbage is vegan for the most part. Um, they, the kale in Germany is a little bit different. And the, when Germans prepare kale, it's traditionally with bacon. So it's a lot of times like the chopped up uh, kale and with bacon and yeah, and fat. But yeah, it's a lot of meat dishes and brats like sour brat and things oh like yeah that. sausages of course sausages yes yeah bratwurst yeah yeah and beer with with beer too right <laughs> with beer yes you the the germans love their beer for sure yeah nice well yeah you're very very creative very talented Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And you know, you're going to get two free bottles of California balsamic and they have a new flavor you might like called Palapino lime since you're a spice girl. Yeah, I would love it. I, I mean, I'm so, yeah, I love those. And I actually, last time I traveled, I had half my suitcase full of uh, California balsamic bottles. <laughs> <laughs> what's great is that you can actually take them through TSA as long as they're in a plastic bag because the three ounce size is acceptable to them. Yeah, but when I spend more time in, in Germany, I need I, I usually get the, the bigger bottles. Yeah, hey, maybe maybe you, uh, you know, Ethel from California Balsamic is watching. Maybe you can be like the liaison, like like maybe you could start this up in Germany, and, you know, take a bunch over, sell it in Germany. I would love to. I'm mm, happy to, cool. to talk to them. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be wonderful because it's, um, yeah, when I run out uh, and I'm in Berlin, then it's time for me to fly back to, to LA. That's right. That's how she <laughs> plans her trips when she's out of vinegar. Exactly. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much, Petra. This was such a, a delightful presentation. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. And Bye, thanks everyone. everyone. Thanks. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. I sure hope you'll come back tomorrow when my guest who's been on the show before and is back by popular demand is Venus DeMarco. And she is going to be making cheese vegan. Of course, you won't want to miss it, especially with the holidays coming up. You might want to create a beautiful cranberry fig cheese platter. And tomorrow she'll show you how. Take care, everyone.